Hello! I am going to show you an overview of the DigiVibe MXM30 Vibration Analysis and Balancing System. The system is a computer-based vibration analyzer. This system can work in desktop computers as well as on laptops and touchscreen tablets. The only requisite is that they work under Windows 7 and they have an USB port. This is the main screen of the software. As you can see it has many features of common Windows programs. On the top you'll find the menus for the tools and settings. You can also find the most common tools on the icon bar. The left panel contains four tabs in which you will find other specific tools depending on what you are doing at that moment. The first one has all the tools related to the database. The second one has many tools for vibration analysis. In the third one you will find the tools for balancing and finally in the fourth one you will find the tools for your root analysis. We will first take a look to the database. When you first install the software, you will see that there is an example folder in your database. This folder contains some sample signals that you may explore and analyze in order to learn more about the software before you need to record them by yourself. Expand the folder to see the content. The third level folder contains the name of the machine, the second level contains the area and the first one the company. Note that if we expand the machine folder we will find some dates, each one of these dates is a folder containing all the recordings that were taken that day. If we select the machine a trend curve will appear. This curve is calculated with all the measures taken over the time. If we make a zoom on it we will see that the vibration is increasing on almost all the points of this machine. On the right panel we can hide and show the points of our interest. In this case I want to see the second point. If I select the E and A buttons we can also see the tendency of the acceleration in the acceleration envelope. Let's take a closer look to the velocity curve. We can see that the vibration is increasing week after week but we don't know why, remember that this is only the RMS value. By clicking on this button we can see a cascade of each recording. Let's make a zoom on the low frequencies. As you can see there is one special frequency that is increasing over the others. If we move the cursor to the base of this frequency we will see its frequency on the right bottom corner. This frequency is 1725 CPM. Now, we know that this is the speed of this machine so this is probably imbalance. Take a look to the other frequencies and you will see that none of them is increasing as the RPM is, so we can say that in this case the unbalance is causing the increasing tendency of the vibration. You can also see your graphic in a 2D view. You may zoom the vertical axis. You can even see the time domain graphic in a cascade image. Now, if we need to take a closer look to any of those spectra, we need to open it. We choose the date on the left panel and we will see that the files appear on the right box. In this box we can see all the general information of this file without opening it. We will open one of these files by double clicking on it. You will see that a new tab appears. The upper panel of this tab will show the time domain graphic, the second panel will show the spectrum. We will zoom it and take a look to the highest peaks. Each time the cursor crosses the graphic, a legend will appear with the CPM and amplitude information. We can change the x-axis parameter to Hertz, or orders.
When we select orders we need to choose the frequency for our dominant frequency. In some machines there may be many dominant frequencies and we can analyze every one of them. Let's make a vertical zoom in order to see the real second and fourth harmonics. Another way to quickly see a spectrum is directly from the database. Just go to the FFT tab on the lower panel and each time you point on a file, its spectrum will be displayed. If you ever want to print a report of many signals or machines, you can always check the folders and generate a report. Choose your date range and it will be printed in an Excel file with all the values of velocity, acceleration and acceleration envelope. You will also have a filter to hide the unnecessary information. Now we are going to see some more advanced tools. In the database there is also another folder named, Others. This folder contains some reportings of interest. The first one is about analysis. For this kind of analysis we need an accelerometer and an optical sensor. The second one is a bump test. For this analysis you only need a single accelerometer and hit the machine. And the third one is a rundown analysis. For the rundown analysis you usually need only one accelerometer. However in this case we will see that this one was taken with two accelerometers, one in a horizontal position and the other one in a vertical position to see the orbit. We will see this analysis later. Let's take a look to the bump test. This is a typical recording of a bump test. We will first make a zoom to the spectrum and then, this is very important, we make a zoom to the time domain signal. Note that the spectrum is recalculated when we make a zoom. This is important because, if you want to, you can see the spectrum only of a part of the signal. In this case the only part of the signal that has some interest to us is the bump, so we make a zoom on it. Now this is our natural frequency. If you want to, you can change the window. Right now we are going to stay with heading. We set a marker on the peak. and we copy the image and we can paste it in Word or in any other program to make our report. There are other tools that I did not mention like changing the y-axis parameter. You can choose parameters like acceleration, velocity, displacement and acceleration envelope. On the left panel we have some tools to set markers, harmonics and even calculate our bearings frequencies.